I've noticed a pretty universal roadblock in lessons with my new students, and even people who've been playing for a while. It's a huge problem that'll hold you back at the starting lines until it's fixed. That problem is truly understanding how to execute full strokes. Without it, speed, control, and fluidity are completely out of the question. You might think your full strokes are fine, or you might not even know what they are, but if you're stuck, this is probably why. Full strokes go by many names. Rebound strokes, free strokes, legato strokes, probably a lot more, but they're all referring to the same thing, a stroke that starts and ends in the same place, using velocity on the way down with a relaxed hand to let the rebound guide you right back up. For perfect full strokes, we need to use the combination of our wrist and fingers together to move the stick down. That's pretty much it, like it's the same physics of dribbling a basketball. But let's really get into the technique and some of the issues I've been seeing. So we're gonna start with our sticks up all the way, because I don't want you to think about lifting at all right now. You can do full strokes at any height, but we're gonna start up just so we can see what's really going on here. In this position, we're holding the stick by our fulcrum, either the front fulcrum or a middle fulcrum, more on that in my technique video. Our wrists are turned up and the rest of our hand is partially open. Keep your fingers on the stick, but let it breathe. So in regards to the fingers, let's really understand how they're working here. Notice how when I open my hand, the stick falls back, and when I close my hand, the stick goes back to where it was. So in our rotation down, our wrist will do part of the work and the inside of our hand will do the other part of the work. These two mechanics working together are crucial. When you throw the stick down, really think like you're tossing it down with wrist rotation. While this is happening, pull your fingers slightly into your hand. Don't squeeze them, just pull them in. This motion is how we bring the stick down, and the speed of which we move determines our velocity and volume. So that's how we move the stick down, but when we make contact with the drum, our wrist and fingers have to stay completely relaxed with a strong fulcrum. Strong fulcrum doesn't mean tight or squeezy, because then the stick can't move freely, but we don't want it to be too weak or loose, because then the stick won't react properly. Think of your fulcrum at this moment as a hinge for the stick to pivot back and forth on. At the point of contact, we want there to be as little human interference as possible, so the stick will go back up on its own without us having to lift it. The momentum of the rebound should naturally naturally lift our relaxed wrist back up while opening our hand partially once again. Just remember, don't lift the stick at all. All we're doing is throwing the stick down and the rest is happening on its own. Try to play eight on a hand with your stick starting up at a nice slow tempo so you can really feel how these mechanics are working. Be sure to use your wrist and fingers for this and not your arm. Here are some things to keep in mind for success while you're practicing this. One, don't do anything to stop the stick. Let it make full contact with the drum, and as long as you aren't controlling this motion, it should bounce right back up to where it started on its own. So at no point should the stick stop unless it's stopping where it started. So don't hold your wrist down. Like if I just hit the drum and let go, you see that the stick wants to come back up in that direction anyway. Consider that the stick is gonna bounce back up at the same speed that it went down. So if it's coming up more slowly, that's because you're controlling it too much. Also make sure you're not pointing down when playing full strokes, cause then the stick is gonna struggle fighting against you to come back up. The second thing is to make sure that you're not lifting the stick. Only throw it down. Let physics do all the work. As soon as you start lifting the stick, all momentum is lost and the whole system breaks down. And the third thing to look out for is if you know anything about downstrokes, you know that as soon as the back of the stick touches the back of the palm, the stick will stop. If you don't know anything about downstrokes, they're pretty important and I break them down in a few videos. So you're using your fingers to help with the rotation, but we don't want to pull the stick all the way into our hand. At really low heights it's going to happen, but that's a whole different thing. Now here are the things that I see people struggling with the most with full strokes without realizing it. The first thing is what our fingers are doing. So if our fingers are coming off the stick, we're going to lose our grip. We might even end up controlling the stick incorrectly because our input is slapping the stick instead of moving the stick. This includes your thumb. So if your thumb is coming off the stick, you're going to lose all accuracy and control. We need to keep the pad of our thumb on the stick at all times. If it's falling off or going too high or too low, break that habit. On the other side of the coin, don't squeeze or lock your fingers. They have to move freely with the stick on our wrist. The second thing is bad rotation. So we want the stick to move up and down like an arc. The bead of the stick is the real implement here. It should be the first thing that moves. That means cranking our wrist and not lifting our arm. The third thing is a bad wrist shape. We need our wrist to be as straight as possible. If it's a little bit crooked coming too far out or too far in, first of all, you're gonna injure yourself. Second of all, you're not gonna get the right rotation. The stick doesn't want to bounce the right way, it's going to injure my wrist, and it can come out at an angle. So keep your wrist straight so it can move naturally. Lastly, too much control. Don't control the stick on the way down. Really try to internalize the idea of throwing it down. If you're controlling that movement, then we've already lost. Alright, as always, the best way to practice this is slowly and with intent. This is not the kind of thing that you want to practice mindlessly. Watch yourself in a mirror, record yourself, and really see what you're doing. You can use the examples in this video as a reference for what to look for and what not to look for. Well, if you enjoyed this video, or if you're new here, please give me a subscribe. Hit the bell icon because I got new videos coming out every week. Also, give me a like and a comment 
content really helps me out. Check the description for links to my website for lessons. There's also a link down there to my Instagram and a link to my music, which you can find on all platforms. And if you really enjoyed this video, you can support me by giving me a super like or by becoming a member of this channel, where you get early access to videos, input on what these videos are going to be about, and a bunch more perks. All right, see ya. Thank you.